Hello, good morning. Welcome to this mid-morning taste challenge we have from 1990. It's got a new label now, but uh, you, know, you know these companies update their labels, spruce them up time to time. I bought this for $16.99 at Dorgnax. This is the San Remy Extra Old XO Brandy. There are some video reviews for this, but not many. Uh, there's the box. It comes in a nice box. Saint Remy French brand were introduced in 1886. They had the same distillery over there in France. It was established by Remy Martin. It says on the label here, brandy imported by Remy Cointreau. Cointreau, Cointreau. They make the uh, orange liqueur, Cointreau. Uh, and so, if you get the cognac, it's Remy Martin. If you get the brandy, it's Saint Remy. The French brandy. What's the difference? None really, except that cognac is made in the cognac region of France only, according to certain processes. And brandy, French brandy, can be made in any part of France. And conceivably, the island of Corsica, right? Martinique, uh, Guadeloupe, Saint Saint Martin, Saint Barthélemy. French Guiana, New Caledonia, French Polynesia. I mean, it could, uh, it could, um, Reun Reunion Island in the Indian Ocean. They're all part of France, so I guess conceivably they, they could be made there, but they're not. French brandy is all made in uh, metropolitan France, the main mainland of France. Now the competitor is a cognac, which has to be made in cognac, the cognac region of France, France. Republic Francais, which is near the uh, Atlantic Ocean. Martel established 1715 Blue Swift. Well, Blue Swift was not established until 2017, three years ago. It's a VSOP cognac brandy finished in bourbon barrels. Not aged, really. It's aged in French oak, I guess, but it's finished maybe the last few months, three, five, three to five months, whatever I'm just estimating, in Bourbon barrels. Who's bourbon barrels? Well, I don't know. Uh, there's the blue swift. That's the uh, bird. That's the logo of Martel, a, a bird, a blue swift. See it? I got this bottle really cheap at, um, what is it? Uh, yeah, 200 milliliters, I thought, at Savannah Discount, metal cap. If you get a regular size bottle, it runs about $24, $24.99, let's say $24 to $25, $24, $25. Hold on a second. I don't recognize that number. They can leave a message if it's that important. Might be some campaign, you know what, bull honk. I'm really rolling with Brandy because I did the John and Neely recommended. He does Georgia beer reviews. He recommended the Christian Brothers Holiday Nog. This cap is defective. I went to lift it up and the cap came off and the thing fell over and Brandy spilled out. I was disgusted. It doesn't really hold tight. I mean, you can get it kind of tight, but it's a product problem. <clears throat> San Remy. Okay, so Martel, they're an old company. They're the oldest cognac company in France. They've been around since 1715. They make a lot of products. They're sort of popular. They're not real popular. I mean, they're known. They're around. I mean, they're a name. But, I mean, Hennessy probably sells 50 to 1, right? But then, of course, Hennessy probably sells 50 to 1 against all the big competitors. I would like to try the Ciroc, French brandy. That's only been on the market like three years. Ciroc does the famous uh, vodka from France and uh, really popular in America. Uh, but I'm not a vodka person, but I would like to try the Ciroc French brandy.
Now, uh, Savannah Discount and Marrero had Ciroc for $29. I was about three months ago. I saw it, 29 bucks. I would drive out there for that because Walmart has it $4 more. I'm sorry, $5 more. And I wouldn't be driving out there specifically for that because I would drive to Savannah Discount and see whatever else they had. And then I would go to Discount Depot at the other end of the highway and or further north on the highway and look look at um, whatever they had. But anyway, uh, let's think about this. Uh, the the Cerami XO, $16.99 a bottle. Good price. Great price. Martell, the regular size bottle, 25 bucks. So we're talking about the round off, 17 to 25. That's an $8 difference. Is it going to be $8 better? Well, I don't believe so. The Martell VS was not eight, $7 better. It was a little bit better. It was. It was a better product. Even though it's a VS and the Sarami is VS XO. But it wasn't. Wasn't seven dollars better? I'm sorry. Like I said, Saint uh, Saint Remy was created by Remy Martin in 1888 in France. Remy Martin makes their own cognac brandy. It's the same company, but they make cognac. I'm sure you've heard of Remy Martin. Remy Martin VS VSOP. They make the Remy Martin Louis the 13th, which is only about $3,900 a bottle. <laughs> True story. $3,999 a bottle at Dordnax, Martin Wine Cellar, and inter International Market. Subject to negotiation, I'm sure. First thing we'll notice is that the, the, the Martel... Is darker. It's deep mahogany amber, much like a bourbon, say like a Elijah Craig barrel proof. Um, but it has no relation to that. <laughs> and then the uh, the Sarami XO is is dark. It's dark, but it's lighter. Uh, even, but it is darker even than Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels whiskey is not that dark. It's close, but it isn't that dark. So there is a color difference. I'll have to be careful about that. Let's remember, $8 difference. If you buy Martell, it's going to cost you $8 more. Assuming we're getting 750 milliliter bottles. I have a 200 milliliter. Well, they had a great deal, so I bought it. You understand? But uh, I would have... I would have bought the full size bottle. It just would have been a case of me buying it years later. They had it so cheap, I said, no, I'll buy it. Same thing with the VS. They had it cheap, so I bought it. When I go back to Savannah Discount and Discount Depot, are they gonna have some exquisite products that are ultra, ultra cheap, like unusually cheap? Yeah. I won't be able to explain why, but I'll buy them, you know. Like uh, Shivas Regal Mitsunara. Everybody else has it, $54, $55. Check, check me. You can look it up. $54, $55 everywhere. Savannah discount, $17.99. $17.99. Now, explain that. <sighs> it's warm. It's humid here. When you think of October and November in Louisiana, you think of what well, you say, crackling fires, sweaters, crisp fall air. No, really, you think of shorts, T-shirts, and muggy, humid weather, 85 degrees for the high. That's what you think of. That's what I think of because that's what I deal with. And mix them up a few more times. A feeling on this... I think the Blue Swift is going to win by a little bit because it's got that bourbon barrel finishing. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know who's bourbon barrels. 
it's probably some famous company everybody heard of that got bought out. You know what I'm saying? Like Wild Turkey's owned by Campari of Italy, Italy, and Jim Beam's owned by Suntory of Japan, and so on. But probably something like that. But um, I think it'll win, but it won't win by eight dollars. You know, it might be two dollars better, three dollars better. So by default, I think the San Remi XO is going to win because, I mean. If you can save eight dollars for a bottle and you're not losing much, I mean, save the eight dollars, right? Mm. That's pretty uh blah, 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 blah. funky monkey in the nose. And and these San Remi, they'll be funky monkey in the nose. They'll be turned, they'll be like they have like a little twist in it, like ring. You say, what does that mean? Mm. Well, it's sort of like fruit that sat out too long, and then you go, and they got flies flying around it, and it smells like fumigated. You know what I mean? Like there's fumes in there. It's like rancid fruit fermented. It's like rotting. You know, it's like, oh, <laughs> they kind of have that, you know. The Blue Swift will have more of a bourbon barrel, charred oak, I think. Let's smell it. I, I assume this is the Blue Swift. Yeah. Now, what is the aroma? Well, of course, it's brandy, the grape, grape wine, red and white grape wine based product for distillation purposes. But you do get a, a slight bourbon barrel note, which is sort of like. <sighs> old crow type thing you say old crow oh boy i'm excited now i it hey 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 they say bourbon barrels they did not say expensive bourbon barrels but that's what it reminds me of old crow with that that what you call it bread you know what i'm saying the um sourdough bread yeah sourdough bread type thing. All right. So on aroma, aroma, aroma. I think that's the ceremony, which I like. A lot of figs, a lot of nougat, a lot of dates, a lot of uh, yellow raisins. Now, I know some people are watching saying, turn off, turn off, turn off, turn off. Yuck. I get that. But that's what it smells like. You get a little of the turned fruit here, but it's more just bourbon. I mean, it really comes through. It comes through. And I, I keep saying wild turkey, but it could be an Evan Williams type thing. I know, right? Evan Williams green label. Yeah. Charcoal filtered Evan Williams three-year age green label. Uh, yeah. Something. I don't know. That's what it smells like. All right. Maybe more old crow. So on aroma... I think that's San Remy XO, and I think that's the Blue Swift from Martel. I'm not quite sure. I'll taste it, but I'm pretty sure, but I'm not quite. I got it wrong the first go around. Did I not this morning? Man, a lot of grape skins. <laughs> you know, when you're eating grapes, I know some people that eat grapes and they just throw the skins out. They just suck all the middle pulp out and you'll see them throwing the skins away. I can't blame them, but I like the tannic qualities of the skins, you know, but you'll see them do that. Ugh. It kind of has that. And those grape skins will be like that white powder on it. It's not that they're getting dry, really. It's like mold. <laughs> won't hurt you, you know, but um, these wine grapes, they be look like they got dust on them, but it ain't dust. Oh, forget it. Contest over. Contest is over. Like Ken Harrelson said, this game is 
over. He gone. All right. It's pretty obviously the blue swift because it's got a very, a very woody, sharp bourbon barrel um, note. I was going to say you could even perhaps give this to somebody and tell them it's bourbon and they might think it is. If you just keep talking like they're watching a the game, they're being distracted. They'd be like, man, look at Denver. They're having so many problems. What's going on? You know, I can't believe Los Angeles Chargers beat them so bad. Something like that. Like you get them misdirected and they might think it's bourbon. I mean, if they really thought about it, drank on it while they thought on it, think on it while they drank on it, they might say, hey, this doesn't taste like bourbon. It's got some kind of wine quality, grape wine. Yeah. But it's pretty strongly bourbon. I mean, they, they really went full bore on the bourbon barrel um, aspect. It's unmistakable. There's no way this is the San Remy XO. There's no way. I'm going to check. It's not going to say, now if it says SR, that's San Remy, and I'm wrong, but I'm not going to be wrong. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't. This is the SR, San Remy. I knew it. I knew it. Now, to, in two days, that's the plan, at least, when I do the uh, Brandy San Luis against San Remy, that's going to be a challenge. I mean, a real challenge. Because the brand new St. Louis is aged, what the girls say? The girl, she's probably like 49 years old. <laughs> but uh, she said um, it's aged like, what she said, eight to 10 years. It's kind of a long age. It's no specific age statement, but it's long. But And the and the, 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 the San Remy people say 10. I don't know about that. I never saw anything definitive, but it's like about 10 years old. I think they're going to be close. I mean, really close. Well, in that case, Brandy St. Louis will win because it was uh, $20.99 a bottle. No, I mean, it will lose. What am I saying? <laughs> It'll lose. I forgot. San Remy. <laughs> oh, no, you drank too much. The San Louis, San Louis, uh, the San Remy is $16.99. Yeah. So the Brandy St. Louis is $20.99 versus $16.99. Act exactly $4 difference. I, I like this, the Brandy San Louise, but like she says on her website, she said, well, it's really designed for chefs that cook French food. They wanted a brandy they could cook with that would be distinctive and, and evocative of like the 1890s, you know, whatever. So um, she never said you couldn't drink it. I mean, you could drink it, but it's just mainly produced for uh, culinary utilization. But anyway, um, I could cook with it and I have cooked with brandy and it's really good, but I hate to waste it and not use it for taste challenges. Well, the San Remy is very nougat, nougat and, and um, um, what are those things called? Dates. You know, those dates, like if you get, get dates and they're so incredibly sugary, they have a fruit, spongy fruit character, but they're so sugary. It's like, you can't believe it. This has that. The, uh, the the Martel Blue Swift. Oh, I love this. It it's really worth it. I mean, go pay your twenty five dollars. Don't be cheap your whole life. I'm not saying buy it on credit. No, no, no. Buy everything cash. Don't buy stuff you can't afford. If you can't afford it, buy Hartley. You say, well, Hartley is not good. I know, but the VSOP is not terrible, and you can afford eight fifty probably. So buy that. But if you ever get the money where you can afford something for twenty five, get it. It's just bourbon barrel all the way. It's incredible. I swear, you could you could trick somebody. You could. I believe that now. You could tell somebody, hey, you want to drink some Old Crow? Oh, yeah, man. My uncle used to drink Old Crow down by the quarry every day after work at 3 o'clock, and I'd watch Tom and Jerry, and he'd drink Old Crow. Sometimes he'd get crazy, and I'd have to call my mama. It's that kind of thing. And if he wasn't thinking too carefully, he might think it's Old Crow. Very bourbon-esque. Very bourbon esque whiskey scout. Whiskey scout's like, I ain't going by no bur no cognac. I know, but uh, I would like to. Tr I'm trying to like trick him into buying cognac and then doing reviews so I can watch him, you know, see what he says. But I say this to you, whiskey scout <laughs> you should buy this and then I'll watch your video. The blue swift from Martel. 
he's probably saying, I'm not buying a $25 bottle of brandy finished, I mean, bourbon finished cognac to satisfy your picayune interests. Yeah, I know, but I'm just I'm making a good effort, a good faith effort of in, enticing people into doing what they don't want to do. <laughs> um, do these taste similar? No, they don't. Do they have common characteristics? Um, I mean, they're 80 proof. <laughs> they're 40% alcohol, if you want to call that a common characteristic. Um, Blue Swift is VSOP brandy finished in bourbon casks, and Saint Remy is VA, uh, XO. It's a higher grade of brandy XO, but it's not really winning. But to be fair, on the other hand, it's not losing. You have to consider that. It's sort of like a personal preference issue. It's like, well, do you prefer a brandy that has more traditional French brandy flavor, i.e. a la vis-a-vis -vis the turned fruit, which it, it sounds terrible, doesn't it? People say, I wouldn't want to drink fruit that's starting to rot. I know it sounds terrible, but when you taste it, it's, well, you might think it's terrible, but I think it's interesting. It, it, I like it. I do like it. It's unique. <laughs> if you're into whiskey, it ain't nothing like that. No. Um, if you want a brandy, cognac brandy that tastes like bourbon, then the Blue Swift from Martell will suit your fancy. That now you, I know you can make a very strong argument, which would be what? Why would I want to buy a cognac that tastes like bourbon when I could simply buy a bourbon? Uh, I think that's a very good point. <laughs> And I can't defend that. I don't know why people try to make rum that tastes like whiskey and whiskey that tastes like sherry and sherry that tastes like bourbon and cognac that tastes like whiskey and Tennessee whiskey that tastes like Canadian whiskey and Canadian whiskey that tastes like scotch. I don't know why people do that. I have a good idea that it's probably because there's a flooded market and there's too many products chasing too few many customers and they're trying to find something that will um, attract people. I mean, why drink a whiskey that tastes like rum when you could just buy rum and it would be the same price, maybe cheaper. Yeah, I would, I would actually agree with the people detracting that. So, you know, okay, they made a cognac that tastes like brand, uh, bourbon. Great, that's great. That's great, Havana's great. It is unique. It does have distinct bourbon qualities. But if you dig deep and think about it, thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. It does have perhaps underlying cognac qualities, characteristics, notes. And I will say this about it. It doesn't have that strong yellow corn grits polenta flavor that you would get with a, 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 a wild turkey 81, an old crow, don't know about an old crow reserve, ain't never had it, ancient age, um, Jim Beam is so unusual, it's hard to bring that into the conversation, um, those type of things. You don't get that heavy corn grits. So it's sort of like the best of both possible worlds in a way, because you get an interesting charred oak bourbon barrel, but then you're, you're cutting out that, which I call a detractor to the bourbon, the heavy corn grits. And it could be a Southern thing where people say you eat corn grits all the time. Yeah, but then you have to say, well, wait, wait a minute, Kentucky and Tennessee is in the South, upper South, but still, um, and they eat grits. And so, they drink bourbon every day of the week, all day long, and it doesn't seem to bother them. So it, 
it, it, it, it, it's a problem there because I know when we went to Kentucky, I was like, are we really back in the South when we were in Elizabeth, Kentucky? And the girl's like, hey, y'all, what y'all want for breakfast? I was like, yeah, we in the South. And I looked at the menu, grits. I say, yep. We back home, Paul. I told Paul, we back home. Because when we were uh, in New England, they had home fries, which was like sliced potatoes. Very good. Diced. Very good. Very good. Very good. I just felt more comfortable eating grits. <laughs> anyway. All right. Uh, no one in New England said, hey, y'all, what you want for breakfast? That They just said, may I take your order? May I take your order? It was, they weren't, it wasn't a lot of that personality stuff going on, but that can be deceptive also and not, not necessarily genuine, but that's another story. Anyway, who wins? Um, well, I guess San Remy would have to win by virtue of the price. I mean, $17 versus $25. And what do you get by paying the extra $8? Oh, bourbon barrel, man. Yeah, but I mean, so what? I mean, you can get stuff that's $9.99 and taste the bourbon barrel. So I don't know if there's really a benefit. It's a gimmick thing, which is fine. Not against gimmicks. I like gimmicks. Much of my life is built around gimmicks. But um, I don't see why you would want to pay $8 just to taste bourbon barrel when you could pay $7 less and taste actual bourbon. Like, you know, I'll just buy Ancient Age, which is straight bourbon, and I will taste bourbon because it's bourbon. You know, not cognac that's aged in bourbon barrels to make it taste like bourbon, which you could... And I would actually agree with you. There's no real purpose for that. I agree. All right. So it's very interesting. But long story short, you would never confuse these two. There is no way in this world or the next that you would think that this, the Blue Swift from Martell, finished in bourbon barrels, tastes anything like the San Remy XO uh, Brand, French brandy, which it does not taste anything like it, although they're both French brandy. How do you like that? Oh, well, now Thursday morning, we'll look at uh, San Remy again against the Brandy San Luis, which I, I can't wait to try. I think it's going to be a draw, which means San Remy is going to win because it's cheaper by $4 if you get a good deal. Now, it's actually much cheaper because the Brandy San Luis is like $27.99, but for whatever strange, perhaps corrupt reason, I can't say it's corrupt, I say perhaps, Savannah Discounts got it for $20.99. I don't ask questions. I get in there, pay my money, and get out. And to close out on Friday, we got San Remy versus... Uh, Oh, Corbell, Corbell, California brandy. It's going to be close, and I mean very close. My feeling, though, is that Corbell's going to win. It's not because I'm trumpeting America, standing up for America. It's because Corbell is $14.99, and it's a doggone good product. Oh, did I mention $14.99 a liter? $14.99 a liter versus $16.99 for a $7.50. Well, right there, that means that San Remy XO has to be head and shoulders better than the Corbell. And I can assure you, it is not. It is not. I'm not being a home fan. You know, I'm not favoring the home product. I'm just saying, ain't no way that's going to happen. So you may as well save yourself some time. And when you see San Remy XO versus Corbell Brandy, skip it because you it ain't no way Corbell's going to lose to San Remy. You know it. I know it. And the American people know it. After that, Brandy's over. We're going to put that to rest for a long time. But we're going to come back strong 
because we got an exciting rum, Ron Rico, gold label. Now people are saying, oh, not that, not Ron Rico, gold label. I know misfits, social misfits, drunks, bums, vagrants, alcohols. Look, I don't care what you know. I'm telling you right now, the Ron Rico gold label is a shock to me. I thought it would be underwhelming. It was overwhelming. I never believed that a bottle of rum for $9.49 could be that good. Just goes to show you what Jim Bean got their hands on from Seagram's in 1994. So I was shocked. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. And I thought, whoa, this product is a little bit more legendary than I had first believed. I knew it was sort of legendary by looking at the old magazine ads from the 1960s and 70s. It was no joke. It is a joke today, I guess, but it wasn't a joke 45 years ago. I know I'm not living in the past. So uh, starting this weekend, we've got um, Ron Rico, Gold Label, matching up against all the other gold labels and the Añejos. And I'm very curious to see what's going to happen. I actually, I'm extremely curious. But uh, that's it. We do the rum, then the, I'm sorry, the brandy, then the rum. And then you better fasten your seatbelt, strap it down, and sit back and get ready because it is going to be time for rye whiskey and do i have some rye to bring you the answer is yes i do and they are great they are all great there ain't a bad one in the mix and it's going to get even more exciting so thank you for watching this video production get ready for brandy rum and then rye whiskey i cannot wait